All right, today I decided to uh, modify one of my breakout boxes here. This is a 20 amp breakout box. It has the full 20 amp plugs and 20 amp on this side. Uh, this is Hubble twist lock. I think it's Hubble brand. Anyway, it's a twist lock type plug. Um, and this is the American style uh, 20 amp. You can tell it's 20 because it has the little T on this side. If there's no T, then it's only 15. If it's only that big, it's rated for 15 amps. Full 20 amps has a sideways plug for 120 volts. All right, so I've made hundreds of these over the years, and uh, I've also made hundreds of hundreds of relay control versions of these. Uh, if you want to remotely turn power on and off, um, so I decided to do a video of one today. This is the additional part set we need. Made a solid state relay, came in this box. And then we need a pass through box. This guy. We need a, a relay of some kind. This is a solid state relay. And this one happens to be a two channel solid state relay. Which is why it has these leads coming off the middle. It has A and B. Um, so it actually has two sets of relays in one package. And these are rated for 40 amps. We're not going to be anywhere close to 40 amps. This is a 20 amp plug. So I'm going to use one for one side and one for the other. I've never doubled these up like this before, but I just happened to get one of these. So decided I'd set it up that way. So we can pull 20 full amps on this side, 20 full amps on this side. Again, this is only rated for 20 amps, so we're not going to pull 40 amps off this box. Um, we're just making it so that we can pull 20 on either side. So you want to overrate uh, your relay and your plug for the maximum of that particular leg, not for the whole system. So we can pull 20 amps on this side or 20 amps on this side. So don't use like a 10 amp relay here. You'll blow it up. A 20 amp relay would be fine. It's going to get really hot. This one happened to be 40 amps because it's just what I got. I actually asked for a 20 amp and he only had a 40 at the surplus place I went. So I grabbed the 40 and it was a dual, so that's even better. Uh, this is not going to get nearly as hot because it's rated for 40 amps. I do have it mounted to this and I did a little bit of how I mounted to this, which I will show you now. Alright, this is the SSR and it's going to go on this plate. It's uh, sort of a heat sink, but it's more just a place to mount it. Uh, this is a 40 amp on each side, so this side and this side. Um, well, actually this is it's this side and this side. It's 40 amps, so each side can do 40 amps, and the triggers are um, just my 5 volt supply will be fine for these, 4 to 15 volts. Uh, so I just got this at a surplus store, and I'm just laying it out on this plate. So I've already pre drilled this hole for my wires to come from the top chamber to the bottom chamber where the relay is, uh, and then I'll run my main leads here. In fact, this is probably going to be too small, so I'm going to put another hole in. Uh, and then uh, my Low voltage here, high voltage here. So I'm just marking it up. All right, I got all these holes drilled. So these are the two cable access holes. You want to make sure you ream these out really well. You don't want the little edges to catch on any wires you're putting through. And then these are the holes that are uh, to hold my SSR in place right here. And I'm just going to use a little bit of standard um, heat sink silicone compound. It's not really essential. This isn't really a great heat sink, but uh, it'll do a little bit. So we're just going to put it on there and hope that it helps transfer heat a little better than it just sitting by itself. Because you're not going to get anywhere close to the 40 amps. Uh, we're not going to draw 40 amps for sure off each side of this, but you're not going to get even close to that performance without a better heat sink than this. Uh, so this is just a, to sink it to the case, basically, and it's just a place to mount it that's smooth. You want to make sure you get this plate without the hole in the middle. They, If you go to the big box store, they're going to have a pre-punched hole here, and you got to make sure you get the right one that doesn't have a pre-punched hole, and they're a little harder to find. There's got to be a thousand videos online about how to put on thermal compound, and they all do it wrong, so I thought I'd just, well, I guess they don't all do it wrong. Most of them do it wrong, so I just thought I'd point out how to do it. This is a lot. You don't really need much more than a thin little glaze on your device. Uh, you only want to put it on one side, you don't have to put it on both sides. Oops, you don't touch it like that. You don't put it on both sides, you just put it on one side. This surface needs to be clean. I've already cleaned this. Um, there are lots of surface imperfections, you can feel them. This is just a steel plate. So that's why I put a little bit more on than normal. 
because I've got to fill the surface imperfections here and here to make a really good bond. Once you put it on, you don't want to slide it around too much because you're gonna you want to slide it a little bit because you want to smear it around a hair, but you don't want to do too much. It's just a real thin coating. Use a credit card or something to smooth it out. I use old gift cards, that works really well. I don't use new gift cards, but I use old gift cards. Uh, and I just, you know, drop it in. You can wiggle it a little bit. But you want a good mechanical connection that just fills in the gaps. You don't want it to be slipping around on the thermal compound. You definitely don't want it oozing out. If it's oozing out around the edges, you have way too much. And it's not going to get a good contact. Okay, so now that this is uh, mounted to this plate with the compound correctly, these are the pass-through holes. So what we're going to end up doing, power is going to come into the bottom chamber here, which is where the relay will sit. Relay mounts upside down like this. Pass-through box sits on top, and then this face plate sits on the very top. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is disassemble this box. These are pretty simple to make. It's literally just two, outs, two duplex outlets and a cable. So I'm just going to disassemble this and we're going to repurpose all of these parts. I'm going to actually need to pull this out a little farther because uh, the wires are going to need to be longer to run all the way to the top. And I know, yes, this is for not what this is for. You need a cable entry, but uh, I didn't have one. So this holds just fine. It's not watertight or anything anyway. All right, I got this all the way apart, and I'm going to end up stripping these all back and redoing these ends. They're really gnarly after I got it apart. And uh, these two ground isolated plugs. You don't need ground isolated plugs, but I uh, happen to have them, so I'm going to use them. And uh, I need to strip this back and give me another four inches or so, four or five inches. So I am going to do that with a razor blade. This is the best way I've found to do this. I've done this probably a thousand times. Um, but one of the main things you want to do is be careful you don't cut the inner wires. You don't want to even nick these. You just want to nick this outside just enough that it will break apart. You don't want to cut all the way through it. So you nick it and bend it. So I scored it. You can see that I didn't cut all the way through and now I just bend it really sharply and it will start to tear. And I just lightly am going to touch it with the knife to cut it without cutting the inner wires. See, it's most of the way through. It's probably 95% of the way through. And if I peel it enough, it'll break all the way. But I don't want to nick those inner wires, so I'm just going to very lightly finish scoring it all the way around. Okay, that does, always does a good job. That is the way to do it. I just peeled it a little bit and broke it right off. See, and I didn't even touch those inner wires. The next thing we're going to do is trim these off. Again, you want to trim all the cardboard parts without messing up the uh, outer or the inner wires. Okay. Now I've trimmed it, pulled it back into the box the appropriate length, and now these are the right length. I'm going to redo these ends again. So we can probably just cut those off. Now uh, we need neutral and ground to go through into the upper chamber, and then the hot is going to go in the bottom chamber. Alright, so I just took one of these little uh, connectors here ring type spade connectors and I took the little plastic part off because it gets in my way. So I take it off and I just heat shrink it when I'm done. I'm gonna have to modify these a little bit because these are only rated for like 10 gauge cables so 212s will not fit in there. We need to splice the 212s together into the single ring terminal. You don't have to use ring terminals, you could put it straight on the lugs here, but I'm gonna use a ring terminal because it's a lot cleaner when it's done. Alright, I'm just gonna clamp this on here with my linemans and again uh, most people don't realize that's what the little thing on your linemans is for, to cr clamp these on. Uh, this tool actually works phenomenally well for doing this. I clamp it down as hard as I can. It's pretty stuck on there. I might hit it with a little bit of solder because I like things to be forever permanent, but it's got a really good bond, so we're going to call that good for the moment. Alright, so this is how we bridge the two inputs. We have our hot coming in from our wall plug here into side A of our relay and then it's going to bridge over to side B. So I just put these here so that we can see where they go and get a correct measurement. I'm going to cut these to length, strip, and put them all together. Alright, so this is how this should look. Why is it whenever I start recording, there's a plane flying over your head. This is how this should look from the bottom. This is the relay all wired up. I just finished these, soldered them all. They're cool now, obviously, because uh, watching someone solder is like more boring than watching paint dry. 
So I use my little pliers and I bent this over to 90 degrees so it'll have proper clearance. Um, these terminals won't contact anything in this box, but I'm going to put a little electrical tape over them just in case, you know, something falls down in there. We don't want to short these. This is not fused or anything. We want to make sure this is going to be uh, totally insulated. Uh, these are also insulated from each other, so there's no problem with these shorting out, uh, just touching each other like this. But we're going to wrap some electrical tape around this box anyway. These are our low voltage leads that trigger a relay. Uh, plus and minus for the A side, plus and minus for the B side. And then everything's going to run up through these sets of holes to the top portion, which we're going to assemble next. Alright, this is what this looks like half assembled. So the relay controlled parts in the bottom. Hot for the relay is under here. And then these are the two relay controlled outputs. These are ground and neutral. And these are my outlets that I'm going to wire up next. Now these are isolated ground neutral, um, isolated ground outlets, which means that the chassis here is not grounded to ground, which is normally used in a hospital application or in audiovisual where you have very sensitive grounds. You don't want it going through conduit. Well, there's no conduit here. So that just means this box is not going to be grounded. These are more expensive outlets, but it's just what I happen to have. So I'm going to use them. This box will not be grounded. It's going to be totally isolated, which means pretty much nothing for this application. One wire in neutral and ground like normal, and one hot to one, and the other hot to the other, and then we'll be ready to roll. All right, so I've got the neutrals and grounds hooked up again. I soldered these terminals on. I didn't bore you with watching me do that because I don't have a way to hold the camera anyway. So they're soldered together. They will never ever fall off soldered on here and then I've got neutral wired in neutral was on the same side as the ground here in the US this is how this is supposed to work uh, and these are tied together so it's the same now the hot side uh, we are going to wire in one blue and one red it doesn't really matter which is which as long as we remember which one is which so I'm gonna wire those in now all right, red and blue are my two relay controlled outputs I got one on this hot and one on this hot and neutrals and grounds are wired up. I'm going to put electrical tape around these to keep these from shorting out. It's just a good practice, so it's not really necessary. And then I will finish putting it together. Alright, now i got it back assembled. I've wrapped all these wires in electrical tape uh, to make sure that these are not going to be an issue. And I'm not an electrician, but uh, the master electrician told me that this was code to wrap them like this. So we wrap them up and, you know, it keeps stuff from touching them anyway. Uh, and then we're just going to put the box back on. This is pretty easy. I think you can get it from here. I'll just mount this box back up. Sometimes I put LEDs on these things so I can tell that they're turned on or not. I don't really have time to do that today. i got to get this one working. So I'm just going to put it back together like it is, and we're going to call it good.